Okay. Welcome back for our final presentation this hour. Uh, we are going to hear from Andrea Ravignani of the Max Planck Institute for Psycholinguistics. Um, he's going to tell us about the vocal skills of seal pups, and I am personally hoping for some cute pictures as well. Um, so here we go, Andrea. Thanks so much. It's lovely to be here, and, and indeed, I'm going to talk about seal pups. Um, Actually, um, seal pups, you, you will see why I'm doing research with baby seals, because what I'm after, well, the big, big questions, big scientific questions that keep me up at night are trying to understand the uniqueness of these two uh, human traits, speech and music, right? So we, we, we speak all the time, we enjoy music, but biologically speaking, they're a bit puzzling. So looking at the building blocks of these abilities, we see that we have these two abilities that are otherwise scattered across taxonomic groups and very rare in the animal kingdom. And one, one is the capacity to vocally learn, so what we do as babies, but also what parrots do, so imitate sounds, learn sounds that are not in your innate repertoire. And the other is the capacity for rhythm, so to imitate, perceive, produce, synchronize to patterns of temporal intervals. And the big question is, why do we have them? Which, which other species have them? And how did they evolve or possibly co-evolve? Because lacking a time machine to understand the evolution of human co co cognition, we can look at other species as well. So um, in particular, uh, in 2006, Professor Annie Patel at Tufts suggested that um, rhythm, the capacity for rhythm and vocal learning might share neural circuitry, at least in humans. And until then, there was only evidence in our in our own species until evidence from a parrot who was a vocal learner came out. You'll see this video from a paper published in Current Biology. So notice how the BPM is going to change, right? So um, this, this cock too was the first evidence in a non-human animal of flexible rhythm synchronization and was quite striking. And then I asked myself, well, could we find rhythm and could we find vocal learning? So could we find these um, joint skills in some other animals, poss possibly closer to us? Because birds are fantastic vocal imitator, have rhythmic capacities, but they are as far away from us as dinosaurs. So how about mammals? And then I went looking for which mammals show interesting evidence of vocal learning and at least there are three groups that also use the larynx like, like we do to produce sounds and these are bats, elephants and seals. And I have chosen to focus my efforts on seals because I think you'll all agree they're the cutest. But apart from that, um, because I ran into this case of Hoover. So Hoover was an orphan seal pup in the 70s and was rescued by a fisherman in New England, right? So Seal pups really need their mom for the first few weeks of life, otherwise they die. So the fisherman rescued Hoover and he would treat him like a dog, saying, hey, Hoover, come over here. How are you? Uh, and so on and so forth. So far, so good until Hoover became too big. Adult seals get to 100 kilos, had to go to the New England Aquarium in Boston, where upon hitting sexual maturity, he started addressing the, the visitors of the aquarium like that. So this is a seal imitating human speech, which is very common in parrots, but incredibly rare in, um, in mammals. Um, so this made me study um, harbor seals and their vocal plasticity capacity. Of course, um, um, baby seals do not sound like Hoover at all. Hoover was a, a one of a kind, um, but it showed us that saying, come over here cannot possibly belong to a natural repertoire, so Hoover must be a vocal learner, like, like a parrot. So a baby seal or a seal pup at two weeks of age sounds like that. So um, with this with this, so I've been spending, and my research group has been spending the last few years trying to understand um, vocal plasticity and rhythm in these species. Um, so for instance, one experiment we did um, in 
non-invasive playback experiment we did in Harbrook Seal Pups was um, uh, exposing them to bandpass filtered noise, which would perfectly overlap with their fundamental frequency, right? So most animal species in response to that, what they would do would be just to boost the amplitude of their sounds, the so-called Lombard effect. But a few animals, like for instance, also vocal learning bats, what they do is they possibly fine grain control their, their vocal folds, the tension of the vocal folds to escape this masking noise. So what, what we saw in seal pups is that the louder the noise, the lower their fundamental frequency as a way of escaping this kind of noise. So we have triggered um, this kind of change in fundamental frequency. And what we see um, in, um, in um, if, if we were to look at how strong, what's the, the, the entity of this change, um, uh, yeah, it basically, uh, uh, um, a baby seal is so vocally plastic that a, that a baby seal of seven kilos is so vocally plastic that it can sound as deep as a, as a baby seal double the, the weight, right? So it can really lower the pitch of the voice. Um, quick look at rhythm experiments, a bit different from what we've seen from the parrot. What we did were sequences of um, calls of conspecifics, and then we measured how the seal reacted, vocally reactive, so you will hear a playback and a response. So what we see here is some sort of rhythm, but it's, some, it's not the synchrony we have seen in the parrot, but it's like the anti-synchronous turn taking of human conversations. So what we have seen until now, and I'll talk more about this on Friday, is that already the set of vocal learning species is very small, and the, the set of species with rhythmic capacities is a, potentially a subset of that, also much smaller, and apparently until now, Seals and humans are the two only mammals to have both. So that's why I argue that um, for now, they are excellent models, a bit unexpected, but excellent models to understand how our uniqueness or maybe non-uniqueness, because um, we are unveiling the building blocks of speech and music by finding all these tiny Lego blocks in other species. And um, seals can tell us a lot about what it means also to be human. Thank you, Andrea. Um, so I'll, I'll kick us off with a question. Uh, so when you showed us all these animals, I noticed there's an elephant and there's humans that have these abilities. And I feel like elephants are notoriously intelligent animals. Is that also the case with seals? So there is, yeah, I mean, intelligence is quite, quite can be quite broadly defined and there can be many, many shades of, of intelligence, right? But um, so there are 33 pinniped species. What, what I would say of harbor seals is that they're not, you know, they're not, I've also worked with chimpanzees and they're not like chimpanzees, right? They don't have a very developed social co co cognition because their niche, their niche doesn't require that, right? So they're, I wouldn't say they are particularly intelligent, but they are a great model species to understand vocal plasticity in mammals, including us. And, and do these seals, uh, are, they, are they just vocal animals in general? Uh, do they communicate a lot with each other? Yes, yeah, so they are, they're vocal at two stages of life. The, ba the baby seals, the seal pups we've seen to communicate with their mother. And then what we think as adults, they engage in these vocal displays, a bit like bird songs do, to, to somehow attract potential mates. But we are still not fully understanding that. So potentially what Hoover was doing, incorporating these human sounds, he might have been singing a song to some extent. Okay, great. Do we have any live stream questions coming in? Well, we've got one from the room, though. I mean, is that a surprise that a, a harbor seal could actually vocalize in that way? Or you said that the, you know, the one that you worked with was sort of one of a kind. Uh, but Yeah, I wonder if, if it was a surprise for you when you were working with a seal uh, to have it vocalized so so easily. Um, I mean, you know, when I look at a seal, I, I really don't really know anything about seals, but do they even have ears to hear? They must. Um, but um, given the fact that this seal was a one-off, 
you know, what surprises did you come across? Were you astonished, for example, that, that you had this, these results? So I guess you're referring to Hoover. So yes. Hoover, I never met Hoover because Hoover was, was a rock star in the 70s and 80s. Um, but it's extremely surprising that, that a mammal can parrot or can imitate sounds, right? The default option, like uh, all primates basically lack most of the neural machinery to do that. So we have this, as humans have these direct projections from the motor cortex to the laryngeal motor neurons that allow a fine grain control of that. We have a double pathway, right? And that pathway seems to be allowing for learning speech sounds, etc. So until now, the best examples that we had seen were from birds, which have a completely different brain and completely dif different phonatory apparatus. So having a mammal imitate sounds is very surprising because the, the baseline option, the default option is that animals Mammals do not learn sounds. There are very, very few sporadic cases. All their, a, a, a deaf and chimpanzee can still speak chimpanzees. Um, a, a dog raised on a, on a desert island with no interaction can still emit normal vocalizations like, like normal dogs. A human raised in isolation will not automatically speak English. And this is probably also the case for seals and bats. Okay, well, great. That was wonderful to hear about, Andrea. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Um, so thanks, everybody, for joining us this morning. Our next session will begin at 11 a.m. Central Time. We're going to learn about diagnosing pneumonia with machine learning, uh, dust devils on Mars, and music playlists that can balance your emotions. We will see you then. <laughs>